You're Dr. Reed, right? Mm-hmm. Derek talks about you. He does? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the times these two BAU profilers were major friendship goals. Don't make me spank you when I get back. Don't listen to him, Garcia. He's all talk. Ah! Number 10. Brains and Brawn Many unsubs think they can outsmart law enforcement. Although Corey Bridges thought he'd be different, he couldn't win when Dr. Spencer Reed and SSA Derek Morgan worked together. Corey, calm down. How am I supposed to calm down? After killing two of his classmates and trying to pin the murders on outsiders, Corey speaks to Reed. The unsub made his interest in Friedrich Nietzsche and criminal profiling clear. I, I'm with the FBI, the Behavioral Analysis Unit. Profilers? <laughs> this is mad cool. I got like a hundred questions. I got. Wait, well, why would FBI profilers be here in McAllister? Later on, Morgan catches on to Corey's act, leading to a standoff with Reed being held at gunpoint. But Corey loses the upper hand after he's thrown off by Reed quoting Nietzsche. For the evils man's best force, man must become better and eviler. What? That smart decision gave Morgan the chance to tackle the suspect. It was great to see Morgan and Reed use their individual strengths to save each other and apprehend a murderer. Did you have to tackle us both? You're welcome, Reed. Number 9. Reed stays with Morgan while he disarms a bomb. The BAU profilers are no stranger to life-threatening situations. After all, it is their job to stop the worst of the worst. I need you to keep the exact pressure that you have on that break as you have right now. If you don't, all three of us are going to die. Morgan and Reed have almost died together and separately many times. But an incident in a season 10 episode that centered on two active bombers in Indianapolis made for a particularly tense episode. When criminal Alan Archer accidentally triggered a bomb under his gas pedal, Morgan made a quick decision. Yeah. Yeah, I can disarm this. I just need something sharp. Uh, I, I've, I've got a knife in my glove box. The former bomb squad member worked to disarm the homemade device as Reed stood close by. Naturally, Morgan tells his friend to flee the area. Hey, kid. I think you should back up. Not happening. But he should have already known that Reed wouldn't leave because they would be by each other's sides if the roles were reversed. Fortunately, the duo walked away unharmed. Number 8. Sharing High School Horror Stories in this episode, the BAU traveled to a small Texas town where the young Owen Savage is on a killing spree. You know, baby, we can go wherever we want to go. When the team learns he'd been physically and psychologically mistreated at home and at school, they realize he's seeking revenge. Reed relates to the situation because he endured traumatic experiences too. However, it's clear that he's not the only one. Morgan opens up to his friend about the harassment he faced in school before he established himself as a jock. A freshman year, I was five foot three. <laughs> I weighed a buck twenty soaking wet, so trust me when I tell you I got my ass kicked every day. The admission makes Reed feel safe enough to speak about a humiliating incident that still haunts him as an adult. Stripped me naked and tied me to a goalpost. During this heartbreaking reveal, we wanted to hug him through the TV, but we loved that Morgan comforted Reed in his own way. You know, we forget half of what they teach us in school, but. When it comes to the torment and the people who inflicted it, we've all got an elephant's memory. Number 7. Morgan Helps Reed on a Personal Case When the team travels to Spencer Reed's hometown of Las Vegas for an abduction case, the situation conjures up a nightmare about a boy from his past. Get him off me! Get him off! Morgan, get him off me! Reed! Reed, wake up. It's Morgan. Derek Morgan can see that these events are eating away at his ally. And when Reed stays behind to investigate the unsolved case, Morgan and David Rossi join him on his quest for the truth. I know what this has been doing to you. Let us help. As more secrets are revealed and it becomes more personal for Reed, the normally timid profiler lashes out. But Morgan is there to keep him grounded. He lets Reed know when he's out of line without making him feel alone. You know how these guys are. They just want to feel like they're the ones in control. Additionally, Morgan reminds his friend that they're in a position to make things better. That case was stuck in your brain all these years, and it not only led you to this career choice, but to the same city where your mother lives and for us to have the opportunity to save this child. Yeah. Number 6. Brotherly Pep Talks one of the best things about Reed and Morgan's relationship is that they both sense when the other is feeling down and react accordingly. Sometimes you put up these walls and you block us out and you can't do that, not right now. We need you, kid. 
in a day trip. Morgan sees when his friend is struggling and is usually the first one to check in to make sure he's okay. Reed had backup when dealing with the death of a friend and when he experienced possible symptoms of schizophrenia. Whenever he's dealing with something difficult, Morgan steps up so that his little brother won't be left to suffer in silence. Although Reed may not have to be the one to lend comfort as often, he knows the right thing to say when the time comes. The moment you are wandering around the streets aimlessly, that's when I'll be concerned about you. We definitely had to highlight when he helped Morgan face the anxiety of impending fatherhood. There's one thing I'm sure of, it's that you and Savannah are going to be great parents. Charged by the hour, Doc. Number 5. Morgan teaches Reed to play softball. Every Criminal Minds fan knows that Dr. Spencer Reed is not an athletic person, so he was more than hesitant when Derek Morgan tried to draft him onto the Bureau's softball team. Don't let the skinny geek thing fool you. I know the good doctor's deceptively athletic. Oh, it's deceptive, all right. But Morgan was determined to get Pretty Boy out of his head and into the game. Watching batting practice is a barrel of laughs. At the same time, it's also endearing how much Morgan wants his buddy to succeed. You can do this! In the ninth inning, Reed felt the pressure at the plate, and Morgan was once again there to hype him up. Get out of your head. All the physics in the world will not work unless you just let it flow. The show of support worked because Reed scored the winning run. While we don't expect him to become a permanent player, we love to see him succeed outside of his element. Yes! Yes! You did it! You did it! Number 4. Reed Protects Morgan From Anthrax Exposure In this heart-pounding episode, the team faces a possible bioterrorist threat. The duo decide to check out suspect Lawrence Nichols' home. This guy just had people over for a charity event last month. Should probably take a look around anyway. When Reed sees a broken tube of anthrax spores in the home office, he quickly locks the door to prevent Morgan from getting infected. Believe it, get back. What's wrong? Reed, open the door. After being saved, he gets emergency help for his friend. Reed solely focuses on searching through the suspect's work for a cure. Although we already knew the BAU doctor was a hero, this was one of the most dangerous and selfless things he'd ever done. Thankfully, the team captures the unsub who was actually responsible, and Reed pulls through. From the house to the hospital, Morgan never leaves his side. What happened? You're gonna be all right, kid. And we got Brown. It's over. Number three, elevator freakout. Despite being a crime drama with dark subject matter, Criminal Minds has a lot of comedic moments. Some of the most laugh-out-loud scenes stem from Spencer Reed's habit of info-dumping. Don't do that! Why not? Because there are six elevator-related deaths per year, not to mention 10,000 injuries that require hospitalization. Chill out. It's especially funny when he discusses facts and statistics at the worst times, like when he's stuck in an elevator with Derek Morgan. At the apartment building of a recent victim, Reed and Morgan decide to take the seemingly faster way up. Push it! It's not a push, pull, push, pull. I'm doing it. Nothing's happening. That choice backfired when it became clear they had a bumpy and terrifying elevator ride. From the break in Morgan's tough exterior to Reed's oddly high-pitched call for help, everything about this scene is hilarious. Watch. The post-scare teasing was the icing on the cake. Yeah, it, it hit me when Morgan freaked out when we were stuck in the elevator. You got stuck in an elevator? I freaked? Well, that's not important. Here's what it is. Number two, saying goodbye. After playing SSA Derek Morgan for 11 seasons, actor Shamar Moore departed from Criminal Minds. Promise me I'll take some time. About that. That's his story arc ended with a series of traumatic events. At one point, Morgan almost lost his fiance and unborn son. After enduring that incident and more, he left the team at the end of episode 18 and shared heartfelt goodbyes with his teammates. I'll always be here for you, okay? I know. I know. But perhaps the most incredible moment was his emotional exchange with Spencer Reed. I know you hate goodbyes, kid and change. As many tears were shed, Morgan told him the name of his newborn son, Hank Spencer Morgan. While we would have loved to see Reed interacting with little Hank, we'll settle for this beautiful scene. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Play on, playa. Morgan teases Reed about his secret girlfriend. And she says you have been acting a little squirrely. So I just filmed the rest in. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Play on, play uh. Bickering. While they may have a sibling dynamic, this scene gives old married couple energy. Should have listened to me. It wouldn't have saved that much time, Reed. Let it go. The interchange between the 405 and the 101 freeways is consistently rated the worst interchange in the entire world. Why do you know that? It's a government report. Flirting 101. Morgan helps Reed find his confidence. When you're talking, what makes you feel like an expert? Uh, Statistics. No. Trust me, no. Something else. Uh, when I do magic. See, see, that's perfect. Chicks did magic. A bond beyond words. Although Morgan and Reed struggle to verbalize their love, we can feel it. I just, um... Yeah. You know? I know. I know. Pretty boy. Morgan's nickname for Reed is just iconic. Pretty boy. Hope they didn't mess up that face too bad. You know that's your best asset. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Prank War Out of all the funniest and saddest moments between Morgan and Reed, it's the episode-long prank war that fans love the most. What? What? Their playful and creative tricks also help balance out the dark subject matter of the episode. Apparently, the games began when Reed did really well with betting in a basketball pool, after failing to mention he had vast knowledge of the sport. Oh yeah, you played basketball? I didn't play. I coached basketball. I broke down the opposing team's shooting strategy. In retaliation, Morgan gave Reed's cell phone number to the media. This resulted in endless phone calls for the BAU doctor. Hi, this is Dr. Spencer Reed. I actually can come to the phone right now with a very special message that your mother is Reed. a Reed. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I don't know. But Reed definitely came out on top after a recording of him screaming found its way onto Morgan's MP3 player and cell phone. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the dulcet sounds of me screaming in your ear. Ah! Honestly, we wish this all-star plotline became a multi-season running gag. We would have loved every second of it. Do you have a favorite Morgan and Reed moment? Let us know in the comments. I just can't imagine this room without you. So don't. Don't think about it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.